Greetings, Earthlings. Adam Savage in my cave um, to talk about stunt prop weapons and a specific stunt prop weapon. Um, regular watchers of the channel know that in the summer of 2020, I processed some difficulties by diving into an extremely long, lengthy, and deep build. I replicated Hellboy's Samaritan uh, from uh, Guillermo del Toro's amazing Hellboy films. And this is one of my favorite objects I have ever made in the shop. There are links to the original video in the comments below. Um, it's not the only Samaritan in my collection. I also happen to own one of the stunt Samaritans, which is weirdly heavier than the all aluminum Samaritan. <laughs> um, but it is a terrific education uh, this stunt, this is actually really hard rubber. Uh, you can see it here. I can bend the hammer here. I can bend the, the, the trigger a little bit there. Um, so in every movie that has props, there is always going to be hero props like this, meant for being able to be seen super close up and there's no aspect to them that doesn't feel like it's realistic or actually authentic. And then for every shot in which the camera won't see things that close, there are rubber stunt weapons. Um, and there's a terrific reason for this is because uh, it is a very dangerous game to play with fake weapons, even on a movie set, as everyone now knows because of the tragedies that happened, the tragedy that happened last year on the Rust set. Um, so Hollywood armorers make everything out of rubber that they can. And 95% of the time you see people running with guns, they are holding foam rubber props. Uh, and that's also so that they don't hurt the hero weapons and uh, that nobody is confused about what's going on. So there's this long tradition in Hollywood of rubber guns. And I find it really, I don't know, I find that really thrilling and hilarious and lovely. I'm also amazed at how beautiful the, uh, the replication can be. The idea that this is a completely manufactured rubber gun and this is the real one. I mean, they, they look so functionally and physically identical. Uh, there is no uncanny valley of these kinds of weapons. Um, and, you know, every prop shop has an all sorts of institutional knowledge about how to, how to replicate these things and make them look super realistic. So given what I've said, that every time you see someone running with a gun, uh, it's most likely made of rubber or foam, uh, it means that there should be lots and lots and lots of foam and rubber weapons out there, and there are. And I picked up one recently on eBay I wanted to show you. Um, this is a prop from the movie Dunkirk by Christopher Nolan, uh, and it is a Lee Enfield bolt action rifle. Yeah, I'm gonna cut to some B-roll here so you can see up close, just how beautiful this thing really is. Now, the Lee Enfield rifle is a really terrific and special weapon, so I just want to talk about it for a second. Um, these were invented in 1895. Uh, they are so named after the inventor, James Paris Lee, and the Royal Small Arms Factory in Enfield, where he designed this bolt-action, uh, magazine-fed or top-loaded Weapon. This was British infantry, their key weapon through World War I and World War II. Um, I'm sorry, historians, if I'm getting some of these facts wrong, I apologize. I literally just did a quick Wikipedia search to get Wikipedia search to get ready for this video. Um, a legendary piece of equipment, the Lee Enfield rifle. And this one from Dunkirk. <laughs> Honestly, I'm looking at it right here. And if I wasn't touching it, I would be like, that's metal and wood. Seriously, that's how that's how beautifully this is done. And honestly, here we go. Whoop, 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 whoop. It's made of rubber. It's made of rubber. There's nothing on here that could that could hurt anybody. Uh, okay, don't get me wrong. You could, if you were dedicated, you could certainly do it. <laughs> Whenever you said something like that, you couldn't hurt yourself with this. Jamie Hyden would be like, I could kill someone with a sewing needle if I had enough time. Jamie loved to point that out. I don't know why. Anyway, um, suffice to say, running around with something like this is a lot safer than running around with the real thing uh, for all sorts of reasons. 
Um, and I don't know if these Enfield rifles were specifically made for Dunkirk or whether they were rented and came from Bapti or, or, or Simon Atherton's shop or, or wherever. Um, I don't know, but I was able to pick this up for a pretty reasonable deal on eBay. Uh, and it is a terrific addition to my collection. It looks really beautiful. The only metal on it are these uh, little welded pieces for the strap here and the strap there. Every other thing is monolithic and I can feel that it is a skin coat of like a urethane filled with a foam. Uh, so the whole thing weighs, I mean, you know, I can support it on one finger. It's about one pound. Uh, and, you know, I was just watching, uh, I was watching Sam Mendes' insanely beautiful and amazing film 1917, which I have watched now six times all the way through. I can't get enough of that movie. If you haven't seen 1917, really see it. I also think of the lead actor, George McKay, as absolutely who should play a young Richard Taylor in the biopic of Richard's life. And I think we should all agree that there should be a biopic of Richard Taylor's life. You haven't heard the stories I've heard. It's a fascinating story. <laughs> um, but... I was watching 1917 and I was thinking, I was picturing, yeah, those guys are running around probably with some of these from the same batch as this one would be my guess. Uh, because a lot of stuff gets reused over and over and over again in movies. So, you know, you might get a thing that says this is from Dunkirk, but it might have also shown up in three or four other World War I, World War II movies. Yeah, it's a particularly great piece. I got it about a month ago, and I've been meaning to do a uh, I've been meaning to do a show and tell about it. And uh, yeah, here you get to enjoy some super close ups and see just how lovely the replication is. I also want to point out that the people who do this replication work, they have to do what's called claying up the original, um, which means you know they're often working with a piece. As you can see up on the close ups, this is a beat up piece of equipment probably has some actual antique value and the prop guys don't want to destroy it to cast it but they also want to get it out as in as few pieces as possible one piece is the ideal so they take uh, a clay and they go in and they clay up all the stuff where the silicon can go so it doesn't where the silicone can go so it doesn't get in the interstices um, when I made a casting when I hired someone to make a casting of my blade runner blaster man I spent like hours and hours pulling silicone out of every part of that uh, out of that gun after we made the the master molds uh, and this would be no no exception it is a lot of work to take one of these make a mold and cast it um, and so my hat is off to the replicators for such a lovely piece the painters that painted this again this is a simulated wood grain and yet like I said Staring at it this close, no uncanny valley. It looks absolutely authentic. And the fact that I'm touching it is what tells me that it is not real. But my eyes deceive me. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day. It's not a one day build. It's a show and tell. Thank you guys for joining me for this show and tell. Uh, yeah. I don't think I got any more. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.